Well, Dr. Gipp, I appreciate you coming to the Bible study with me. I've been coming here for a couple years, and I got thinking about what you told me the other night, and I really think my friends would like to hear this too because they really love the Bible. Well, I hope so, uh, but I'll be honest with you from past experience, uh, I found that they'll, that they'll probably be a little less than excited from what they hear. People that tend to defend their version, even if they see a mistake in it, it's based more on pride than a love for the Bible, but we'll give it a shot. But um, don't be surprised if they're a little less excited than, than you expected. Hey, sorry we're late. Um, this is Dr. Gipp, one of my professors at the Bible College. I hope you don't mind if he joins us tonight. Hello. Well, hey, thanks for coming, Sam. We've just been discussing some of the miracles in the Gospels in our group, so uh, glad you came. Justin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your friend? Well, Dr. Gipp and I were talking after class a couple days ago, and he brought up this new concept about the modern translations, and I thought you guys might be interested in it, and I don't know, maybe you can explain it better than I can. Well, guys, I am a King James Bible nut. Now, you probably heard about those, but let me tell you what that means. Uh, we believe that God inspired a Bible perfect in the original, which is probably what you guys subscribe to, but then we don't think he lost the power to preserve it and put it in our hands today. Now, if God preserved his Bible to this day, it's got to be in one of the versions. He can't be in a hundred or two hundred different versions. It's got to be in one of them, and we believe it's in the King James Bible. Well, aren't all the Bibles the same as the King James Bible, just without all the these and the thous? Well, yeah, that's what a lot of people think, that, that all the new versions are just the King James without the old language and the these and thous, but that's not actually true. There's, they, they have a lot of problems. What version do you have? New International Version. Okay, I'll give you an example. You've got an NIV. Uh, read Matthew chapter 17, verse 21 for me, if you would. It's not there. Well, what comes after verse 20? 22. Well, that's okay. Read Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. It's not there. What comes after verse 10? 12. So you bought a Bible from somebody that couldn't count to 25? Well, those verses are in mine. Well, what version do you have? The New English Bible. Well, actually, there's a problem with that. That is probably common to just about every version here. Um, turn to Luke chapter 23. And while you're turning there, let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys believe in a hill called Mount Calvary? You probably sang a hymn or two about Calvary. You went, saw a church, Calvary Baptist Church. or I mean, it's a common, commonly used word. Well, I'll tell you why. If you believe in Calvary, you believe it for only one reason. You believe it because of Luke chapter 23, verse 33 in the King James Bible. Because that is the single only place. I'll show you. Luke 23, verse 33, it says this. And when they came to the place which is called Calvary... Now, that is the only time the word Calvary appears in the Bible. What does your New English say? Um, it says, and when they reached the place called the skull. Okay, what, is, what do you have? What, do you, what version? Good News Bible. Okay, what does it have? The skull. And what does your NIV have? Mine says the skull. And I think I saw a New American Standard, and you looked it up. What does it say? The skull. And what do you have? Mine says Calvary, actually. All right. Do you have a King James? What do you have? Uh, the New King James. Well, let me ask you this. Do you have a in-your-hands New King James, or do you have a between-your-arms New King James? You don't know, do you? Mm -mm. Well, the fact is they've made running changes in New King James and never told anybody about it. Uh, I'll show you. I've got, <clears throat> I've got a New King James. In Zechariah chapter 13, verse 6, the King James Bible has a prophetic reference to Jesus Christ. And in that verse... It says, uh, what are these wounds in thine hands? Now this is a, a New King James Version. And here's what it says in verse 6. Uh, and someone will say to him, what are these wounds in your hands? Now they took out thine, but the, the prophecy is still there. So you got a King James Bible, what are these wounds in thine hands? And a New King James, what are these wounds in your hands? Now this is a 1982. This is when it first came out. That's the edition. What does yours say? Mine says, and one will say to him, what are these wounds between your arms? Well, you just lost a prophetic reference to Jesus Christ, and you got two New King James versions, and they read differently, and nobody ever told anybody that they were making those changes. Yeah, but I think we could agree, you know, that as long as the doctrines are intact, that's the most important part. Yeah, but let's remember something. The Bible is not a college textbook. 
I don't know of anybody that says, hey, what are you going to do tonight? Well, I'm going to go home and read my college textbook like there's nothing else to do. The Bible is our source for, for preaching. Uh, it, is, uh, it's, it goes far beyond just doctrine. And one of the problems with modern translations is they tend to put problems where there were no problems before. Well, Brother Gip, if I can just say something real quick. I, I feel like you've come in here and, okay, you've shown us some problems with our Bible and some of it's funny. And, and you just come in here and you're just causing division now between us when we're trying to learn the Bible together. Well, I understand the sentiment of that statement. And sometimes it is construed that way, like you King James guys are causing division. And if it wasn't for that, we would have unity. But unity is just that. Think about this. There's probably no portion of scripture known to the world lost or saved better than Psalm 23 out of a King James Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So even a lost world knows what that sounds like out of a King James Bible. How about we just do it? How about we just all read We'll read from all the versions you have. We'll read Psalm 23 in unison and see how it sounds. Okay? Now, before we read this, we all acknowledge from the Bible that God is not the author of confusion. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord. For you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. Thou spreadest a table before me in the sight of my enemies. Thou hast richly my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Love will be with me all my life. And your house will be my Lord forever. Now, what one word? best describes what you just heard. <laughs> 